As people have begun to build much more complicated, much more powerful web applications, there's become a need for JavaScript frameworks that make that process a little bit simpler. So in the old days, you know, you could start off with your page and maybe a little bit of jQuery and Bootstrap, and you can kind of get, you know, uh, to a certain level. But now, particularly the companies are building and deploying these huge, complex JavaScript web applications. I mean, that's essentially what Facebook is. When you go to Facebook and you do things on Facebook, you'll see that there's very few page refreshes as well. And that's because a lot of the content on the page is being entirely fetched and rendered using JavaScript. So companies, including Facebook, have started to develop and support various JavaScript libraries that are designed around the needs of people who are writing big, complicated web applications where a lot of people have to be able to work together. There are many of these out there. I could record 12 videos about them, each one covering a different tool. And so I sort of picked this one at random. I think it's pretty well supported. Uh, but the, the tool I'm going to talk about just briefly is something called React. React was developed at Facebook. Uh, it has a little bit of a University of Buffalo connection because one of the developers and someone who's been a, a big proponent and, and sort of a person out there talking about React is a, is a UB alumni, so that's kind of cool. Um, but React is, is something that Facebook developed and released into the community, and it was designed to help them build their own pages, and I think they still use it to provide the, the Facebook interface and other, uh, other pieces of code that they, they push as part of their own web app. Um, so what is React designed to do? Well, well you know, you can, you can learn about this th yourself. It's an open script, uh, open script. It's an open source project. Um, there's lots of documentation about React. React is one of the JavaScript frameworks that's really well supported out there in the community. There's a lot of people using it. Uh, it's become part of, an, of several other projects. It's being used at Instagram and a bunch of other companies are using it to design their own web interfaces. So you can learn way more about it on your own than I'm going to be able to tell you in a couple minutes. Um, but you know, one of the things that's, that's interesting about React is this idea of trying to isolate parts of your web page from each other. So one thing that's very easy to have happen if you start to build web applications using without this type of framework is that there's lots of different parts of the page and there's this huge blob of JavaScript and it's hard to figure out how things map together. So it's hard to figure out which part of the JavaScript is modifying which part of the page and that can make things very ugly. Um, React is really designed to try to bundle everything together. So for example, here's um, a React component. Um, and this is from, it's just from their home page. The component's rendered over here. And you can see that what's happening is it's displaying the seconds that have elapsed since I loaded the page. Now you can do this quite easily, in fact, using um, HTML and jQuery and another JavaScript library. But what's nice about React is that the whole component is all encapsulated in this one place. So, um, and I won't sort of bore you with w what the details are here. You can learn this yourself. Uh, but when the component loads, it sets a timer. And then that timer updates some state on the component. And every time that happens, the component is re-rendered. And um, it renders into this div that says second elapsed and then pulls a piece of state from the component itself. And that's what you see over here. And so unlike, again, you know, I would encourage you maybe to try to do this using HTML, um, CSS, and JavaScript in a library like jQuery, because it's, again, it's quite possible. But you'll find that the parts of the, 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 you know, the JavaScript and the HTML and other things are kind of like split up into little things and not necessarily very well isolated from each other. Whereas this component, if for some reason I wanted a uh, spot on my page, that was showing the seconds to lap, which is kind of a silly example. But if I wanted that, I could just drop this into my project, um, stick it in the right spot on the page, and it works. So one of the goals of React, and you can sort of understand where that's coming from, because Facebook is a big company. Lots of people are working on their front end interfaces and other pieces, and they want to try to isolate various parts of the development process from each other. So this is a nice way of building components that are you know, very modular. Um, so this is one example of a, a JavaScript library. There's a huge amount of work in this area and excitement in this area. You know, things like Ember.js, um, Angular, um, you know, React is, is one that falls into a large category of different options out there if you're trying to build uh, interactive web interfaces. I would advise you to look around and find one that looks interesting, learn a little bit about it, um, you know, you'll get some experience programming. It'll be a you know, good experience regardless of whether you continue to use that framework or decide to use something else. But there certainly are a lot of choices.